Okay, so uh, I figured what I would do in this video is give a little overview to how to generate some moderately complicated finite element meshes in Gmesh, and then how we can import that into MATLAB so that we can use uh, the codes we've written on some more interesting problems. So Gmesh is a free program. You can just Google Gmesh, you should be able to get it. It's got versions for Linux, Windows, and um, Mac, so it works on all platforms, and I've used it on all of them, and they all are about the same. Uh, it's good at creating unstructured meshes on simple, relatively simple geometries. Stuff like this, and even more complicated than this. I mean, I, if, if I had to mesh a car frame for impact analysis, I would not use Gmesh, but it's quite good for more academic problems like this. Where if we wanted to have a refined mesh on this and write the input file by hand, the input node coordinate matrices and the connectivity would be a bit onerous. So what I'll do in this one is I'll kind of take you through generating the mesh on this in Gmesh. We'll talk about some of the concepts in Gmesh, like physical uh, IDs, and um, then we'll use uh, a couple of MATLAB routines that I've written that will import the Gmesh file into MATLAB as node coordinate matrices and connectivity matrices. Okay, So we'll consider this simple geometry here. And also, I'm going to take note that we're going to have a boundary on the top edge where we're going to enforce an essential boundary condition. So I need to know on the essential boundary condition the node IDs along that edge. And then on this region here, we're going to enforce a natural boundary condition. So in general, for natural boundary conditions, what we need to do is we need to actually have the uh, connectivity of line elements along that edge, okay? And they will be conformal to the interior elements, and we'll use triangular elements in this one for the most part. Okay, so when you run Gmesh, you'll get a window that looks like this. Here's the Gmesh window, okay? So it's basically like a graphic window, and then a little pull-down menu window. Uh, the graphic window, you can orient in X, Y, and Z, you can rotate, you can scale, and if I had geometry up here, I'll show you how we wrote, I think, what is it, the first mouse button lets you do a dynamic rotate, the second mouse, the middle mouse button does, I think, pan, and then the third mouse button, I think, does a zoom, but I, I can't tell unless I have geometry on there. Now, on the menu file, there's, well, there's four menus, but we're only going to worry about geometry and meshing. So you can actually build in your own solvers and stuff into here, but we're just going to do geometry and meshing. So geometry is obviously where you define the geometry, and then meshing is where you generate the meshes. Okay? There's two types of files in Gmesh. One is the .geo file, and the other one is the .mesh file. Both of these, by default, are text files or ASCII files, so you can read them with a text editor. And the geo file stores the geometry. You open the, you can define a geo file or open a geo file in Gmesh, and then you can generate the mesh, and it'll actually save the actual mesh this is the node coordinate matrices and the element connectivity in the mesh file. So the geo file just has definitions of the geometries, points and lines and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. Um, another thing I just want to mention is uh, when I actually use Gmesh, it's sometimes beneficial to open the file directly in a text editor as well. And I'll show you how you kind of work two of them together. Um, okay, so back to Gmesh, right? And we will start 
by defining this geometry. So the easiest way to deal with this geometry in GMesh is to actually go in and define the coordinates of all these points. So we're going to define points here, here, and actually I'm also going to define it at the uh, tangent points of the arc and the center point of the arc. And then from that, once we define those points, we'll connect them up with lines. Once you have the lines that bound a plane, we'll construct a plane, and then we'll mesh it. Okay. So when we, uh, so let's let's just start defining the points, and, and I'm not sure what order I want to do it. Maybe I can push this up a little bit, keep that on the page, and then resize this window so it sits on here. That should all be in the... Okay, so that'll work. So let's just start here. We'll call this um, the x-axis and then going up here, the y-axis. Okay? So that'll put this intersection point there at 0, 0. So let's just go through and start calling this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So those are the points we're going to use. So we're in geometry. We're going to add an elementary entity. These are points, lines, so on and so forth. Add a new one, and it's going to be a point. All right? So when you bring that up, you get this sort of point box. You can actually move around and pick points in space, but it's easier to just type in. So the first point here is at z 2, 0, 1. So the x coordinate is 2, the y coordinate is 0, and the z coordinate is 0. Now there's another space here for a characteristic length. All right. Now this is kind of important actually. The characteristic length, when GMesh goes to generate a mesh, how you, one way, and the most simple way, the easiest way, the way I usually do it, to, to dictate what the size of the element is, is through the characteristic length. So each point, if you will, has a characteristic length associated with it. And it will, you know, if they change, it'll smoothly grade the mesh so that in the region of those points, you'll roughly have those size elements. Okay? So we'll call it, let's make a mesh where the element size is like 0.25. Okay, so we'll do a quarter, all right? So we're going to add that. All right, now there's that point. Okay, so that's the first point. Let's put the second point in. That's going to be at 5, 0, 0, same characters in length. We're going to add that. That's the second point. The third point is at 5, 2. Then we go back to the fourth point, that's at 0, 2, so we add that. And then we're at 0, 1 for the fifth point. If I move off, I get screwed up. So it's 0, 1, 0, and that's 0. 0.25, we add that. Now point 6, the tangent point on that curve, has an x-coordinate of... 1.5, right? So it's 1.5. The y coordinate is 1. There we go. Point 7 has a y coordinate, x coordinate of 2, a y coordinate of 0.5. And then the last point, 8, the center point is going to be 1.5, 0. And you do need to add those center points. Okay, so this is. What it looks, the points look like. It's a little tough to see, but if you hit Z, this this makes it so you look down the Z axis, and then you can scale it so it fits. This fits it to the window, and this makes you look down the Z axis. So here you can see the points, and I think it looks like I roughly got it right. And now I can check. First mouse button rotates. Second, okay, the second, the middle mouse button lets you like scale, and then the third mouse button does panning. Okay. So, the, so now we've defined the points. The last thing we'll want to do, the ne I'm sorry, the next thing we'll do is, is connect those points with lines and arcs. Uh, I should probably mention here that also if you look here, 
it gives you a little feedback on what to do and also down here. All right, now before we start adding the lines, actually I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna save this file and then open up the geometry file. Actually, I've already saved it as, uh, you can see here's my path, example of geometry. Let me mention something. In general, when you open up Gmesh, it'll open up like an untitled file and it'll be somewhere, it'll have some path somewhere on your drive. I'm not sure exactly where. When you want to do uh, the save, to save it, initially, there's save as, but actually you want to use rename. Because rename, it's a little confusing, but rename basically takes the file you're working with currently and then gives it a new name and you continue to work on that file. If you do save as, it'll, it's like an it saves it as another name, but you're continuing to work on the original file. So it's a little dumb. So norm normally you want to do rename. After you do rename, you can do C, save as, if that makes any sense. Or you can just keep doing rename. All right, so let's open up this file now. Uh, let's go to my text editor. Here's the text editor I used. You can use whatever you want. You can use Notepad. Then we're going to open up that file. .geo file, just to show you what it looks like. To watch the time. Should have done this while I was talking. So actually, I should. So when you, you can edit the text file directly and then reload it into Gmesh and the changes will be there. Or as you make changes onto Gmesh and do save as, you'll see that those, um, Changes are reflected in the edit text editor file. And I hope this isn't hung up. Why does it seem like it's been for a long time? It does not seem to like that. Close query. Well, while it's waiting to do that, let's look at some of the other things in Gmesh. Ah, so what I was going to say is actually, you also see you have these parameters. So the nice thing about Gmesh is actually you can define parameters to define a bunch of other things. Like, they're, they're just variables. So actually, I usually use one to define the mesh size. And then you can refer to this parameter name, like LC, down here when you do the points. The nice thing about that is then you can just change the one parameter and uh, it'll update, you know, the you can change the mesh size easily. You can also use this to define variables for the geometric dimensions, and then you, you have sort of a parametric type of file. And this is not loading. This is really... It's not querying. That's weird. Usually I can force query this thing. It's not doing it. All right, let me pause here for a second. Fix this. Okay, <laughs> I need to pause. Don't want to waste your time. 